Hey guys, it's me again, and I'm going to be obedient and share this urgent dream that I had with you. It is a message from the Lord, and if you don't know already or haven't watched any of my previous videos, I'm a watchman on the wall, so it is my job to warn you guys of the things that are coming so that you can be prepared and so that you can repent and give your life to Christ before it's too late. So it's with great urgency in my spirit that I share this message with you today, this dream. Not tomorrow, not later, but today. So today's date is March 22nd, 2016. And I just want you guys to know I went to bed late this morning. It was sometime after 1 o'clock. And when I got woken up from this dream or vision, it was 5.42 a.m. So this is how everything started off. Um, I was looking at the earth. And from where I was standing, I could see the details of the earth. So I could see like the clouds and all that stuff. And then suddenly I find myself back on the earth. And now I'm gazing up at the sky. I'm looking up and I see a full moon. And it's really beautiful, a very beautiful sight. And it's really close to the earth. So it's like one of those super moons or harvest moons. And it's really pretty. And so as I'm looking at it, I see it turn to a blood red color. And it stayed like that for a while, but then it went back to its normal size and its normal color. And then from like the look on other people's faces that were around me, I could see that we were just kind of waiting for an eclipse or something to happen in the sky. But I wasn't really sure. But yeah, so we're just looking up and we're waiting for something. And um, that's when I see this round red object fly right by the moon, like zoom. And then... Now, all of a sudden, I'm in a completely different view, like a different vantage point. And so I'm traveling inside of an airplane. So now I'm up in the sky and I'm flying inside the airplane. It's myself and three other family members. So I know that none of my children were with me in this, this dream or this vision. And wherever they were, I knew that they were safe. So I wasn't worried about them. But I'm kind of just more concerned about why I'm flying, to be honest. So anyways, um, like I said... I'm in the airplane and then I'm looking down out the window and I'm looking at the earth and I see the people start looking up in the sky and they start to panic and that's when I heard like a voice in the plane say it has just entered our atmosphere and then my heart sank because I knew what it was I knew what that meant in my spirit it was an asteroid and everybody else that was down there upon the earth they could see this thing too so that's why they were panicking and you know, this asteroid was just traveling so fast and with great speed and the atmosphere just shook the airplane that I'm in and I thought we were going to crash, but we just kept flying. And when I look up in the sky out of the window, um, still in the airplane, I can see Jesus on the clouds and I see him turn away. Like I see him turn his back after releasing this asteroid like he couldn't bear to watch, you know, what was going to happen after that. He already knew. And like my heart just, it just wanted to break into a million pieces. I mean, I just felt, uh, I, I can't even describe it. But so like I can see, I, okay, so I can see the asteroid. I can see the earth. I can see Jesus like all at the same time. And it, it's really crazy that I can see all this. But my first thought was, no, Lord, no, you know, no. And countless people are going to die. And it was too soon. And people, more people could have been warned. I'm thinking all this stuff to myself. More people could have been warned. I wish I had more, um, I, have, I wish I had stored up more food and water. I wish I had told them my dream from the other day about the meaning of the number 2195. And I'll get to that later. But so yeah, these are my thoughts that are going through my head. And then he takes me to a vision and I can see the whole entire United States and I can see both coasts. I see the East Coast and the West Coast and I see tsunamis at the East Coast and the West Coast. And then there's a major earthquake and the, the after effect was just complete devastation. You know, I, I, I can't even describe it. And then I see this dead dolphin wash up onto the shore and I was really desperate to try and get it back into the water. I thought maybe it would, you know, revive itself or something. And somebody that was standing there already told me that it was no use because the water was contaminated. And then I just was so sad, you know, it was really um, a heartbreaking sight to see. And I, I love animals, but so yeah, and it was just like darkness everywhere. And uh, there were lootings and riots because there was a lack of food and water. 
So a lack of food and a lack of water and just riots everywhere and all over America just looked like and sounded like the streets of New York City, you know, at nighttime with all of its sirens and, and um, ambulances and all that stuff. So yeah, when I woke up, I was just really grieved in my spirit, you know, because he doesn't want to do this stuff. And I was just crying in intercession and oh, man. You guys really don't understand. I don't think you really get it. Like, I really had to pull myself together just to even do this video. I've been weeping most of the day and just crying out to, to the Lord for mercy, you know. And um, exactly about an hour later, he gave me this message. So I'm going to read it to you. Um, this message came at 6.42 a.m. It says, my children, my children, my children, have I not pleaded with you? Have I not given you enough warning? Have I not told you to stock up on food and water? Why do you not heed my warnings? Soon, my children, soon, and you shall see devastation like never before. And so that was the message he gave. And yeah, I, oh man, my heart was just breaking. And oh man, I, I, I'm sure it's only just a, a, the tip of the iceberg, a small portion of what he feels when he's going to have to do this thing, you know, bring this judgment down upon the earth. I'll just give you some scriptures real quick as we've been staring at this same page for the last, I don't know, six or seven minutes. But anyway, um, yeah, so this is the scripture he gave me first. It's Jeremiah chapter eight, verse seven. It says, Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. So he's been giving us warning after warning after warning, and you know, he's so merciful and so forgiving and loving and kind, and yet we just take him for granted and we provoke him to anger with all the things that we do. And you know, we really have to repent and seek his face and you know, it's it's just crazy. Um, it's it's a shame that he even has to do all this. And why can't we just listen? You know. So yeah. Um, the next scripture I have for you is from the same book, Jeremiah. Go to the thirteenth chapter, verses twenty-five to twenty-seven. It says, "This is thy lot, the portion of thy measures for me," saith the Lord, "because thou hast forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. Therefore will I discover thy skirts upon thy face, that thy shame may appear. I have seen thy adulteries and thy names, the lewdness of thy whoredom, and thine abominations on the hills in the fields. Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem! Wilt thou not be made clean? When shall it once be?" Wow. All right, uh, let's keep going. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 13. Sorry. All right, so it says, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. So famine... Like I said, lack of food, lack of water. That's why you have to stock up now, 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 now. Get your food, get your water, get whatever you need, your basic necessities, because darkness is coming. You're not going to be able to use your electricity or any of that. You're not going to be able to drink the water because it's going to be contaminated. Okay, that's why I saw the dead dolphin. And, and it's going to be so much death. Um, so many people are going to die. <laughs> Oh, so many people are going to die. Ugh. Oh, man. All right, let's keep going. Um, so now we go to Hebrews 10.31. It says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So, yes, judgment is coming. It's going to be a fearful thing for those who are not rooted in the Lord, who have not repented, who are still living in sin. It's going to be a fearful time for you when you lose your loved ones, when your homes are gone, when your cars are gone, when everything you've known has completely changed. It's going to be devastating. Devastating. All right. Um, all right. Now we go to Jose. I think I took the bookmark out. Sorry. All right, hold on one second. Let me find the book of Hosea real quick. I'm going to back to Daniel. 
Okay, so Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, it says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Your food. My God, I mean. Whew, all right. Um. So yeah, it's not his will that any of us should perish. 2 Peter 3, 9 tells us that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any of us perish, but all come to repentance. All come to repentance. So yeah, um, quickly, before I forget, I'm just going to tell you what um, the meaning of the 2195 is. I had this dream that I went to prison. Um just because I was a Christian and I had to remember the address of the, the jail that I was at so that my husband could come and get me when it was time for me to get out. And um, that's where I got the number 2195 from. When I looked it up, it's actually in cor um, sorry in correspondence to a Hebrew word called za'am, which is Z-A-A-M, which means indignation, anger, and rage. And like I said, America has provoked the Lord to do all of these things. He doesn't want to. He loves us. You know, he loves us so much. But we can't continue on like Sodom and Gomorrah and think that nothing's going to happen. His judgment's going to come and it's going to be swift and it's going to be painful. You know, so you got to, you guys got to get ready. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm not the only one that's been saying it. Other people have been saying it. Um. Ephraim, Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez has been saying it for years now, and, and it's coming to pass. I believe it's going to happen this year. I don't know when. The Lord doesn't give me dates. All I know is that the signs of the times that we're living in, and also moons represent the seasons, days, years. So I, I don't want you guys to take the blood moon literally. I mean, the, the color red in itself is is warning. It's warning for you to know that these things are coming. So it is a warning and it's for a, a time whenever the Lord decides that it's time, which will be very soon. And so it could be days from now, weeks from now. I don't know. Next season, I really don't know. All I know is that it's coming and I just have an urgency to tell you. So that you can't say on Judgment Day or if you die in this flood, this, you know, these tsunamis and earthquakes, that you never heard it. So, uh, yeah. Repent, repent, repent. Amend your ways with the Lord. He is a righteous judge. He's God, you know. He will not be mocked. And America is not going to be continuing down the way that it has and get away with it. So, you know, like I said, he's forgiving and loving and merciful. But these judgments stand. So, um, so yeah, that's it. And I just wanted to get that out real quick. And I hope that's not too long of a video. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Let me check real quick. just want to make sure I got everything. Okay, so yeah, um, that's the message for today, and so I hope you really take it to heed. Like I said, get what you need. Get your food, get your water, get your supplies, medical supplies, uh, first aid kits, whatever you got to get, your money out the bank. Um, I don't know. Just get whatever it is that you need to get for you and your household and your family. And if you're on the coast, move away from the coast. California, the whole East Coast, especially Florida, move away. Tell your family and friends if they live over there, move away from the coast. They're not going to be there anymore. It's going to be completely different. I saw the tsunamis wash so far inland. I mean, you'd probably have to rewrite the map of America. That's how far this, this water is coming inland. Those who are rooted in, in, in Christ are going to be all right. You know, the Lord will take care of you. But like I said, get right with the Lord and repent. All right, guys, be blessed. Take heed in Jesus' name. Amen.